morning children's November the 8th it's a Sunday morning here in bright and beautiful Thailand good weather again today yay happiness can be multiplied by sharing it with others without diminishing the original source it is the one asset that increases when it is given away with happiness the more you give the more you get the greatest rewards in life do not come from the accumulation of financial assets they result from the psychic gratification that accompanies helping others achieve happiness. Those who acquire the greatest riches in life have discovered how to link the two. They have learned how to provide a service that creates satisfaction for customers and generates profits for themselves. When you approach your job with exuberance and a determination to make your customers glad, they chose to do business. They choose to do business with you, not chose. Typo. Um, great benefits will occur to you. They are never, there are never enough happy people who share their joy with others. So there you go. Happiness can be multiplied, sharing it with others without diminishing, without giving away the original source. The one asset that increases when it's given away. Share the love. Share the joy. Um... No election stuff today. I won't do it. I refuse. Um, I will say that there are some irregularities, <laughs> to put it nicely. Uh, I know there's some litigation, some lawsuits. Uh, but ultimately, here's the thing. When I'm watching sports, and I have a feeling that the referees are crooked, and, you know, and there was a guy named McGee, Tim McGee, I think. He was an NBA referee, and he got caught taking money for throwing um, professional basketball games, NBA games back in the 80s, 90s. So, like, anybody watching sports knows it's crooked. You know, the referees are people. Uh, they're susceptible to greed and, you know, things like that. Um, so they take money to throw games. And you could see, you could see the calls are really bad. The referees are not that stupid or blind. They, they throw games for money. It's, it's, a, it's a thing. And like I said, one of them uh, got caught, and he admitted that he knows it was going on with a lot more referees. But, you know, the, the NBA kept that real quiet, shut him up. He was removed or whatever, and they moved on. So apparently the same thing with the ballot counters is some of them. And they, I don't think they did it for money. Maybe they did, but uh, some of them, you know, had loyalties, fierce loyalties. Um, 2016, as we talked about before, was the most uh, emotional election in the United States that I've ever seen. Uh, people lost their minds when their candidate lost. Um, and really, I don't think we've ever healed as a, as a country from that. It's, it's created a divide that still stands today. So some of those very passionate people who believe in their party, their color, you know, like I said, divisive. It's all about we have to win. Well, who's we? It's you're voting for politicians that are going to take your money. <laughs> there's no we, there's them. Not, but they have you, uh, the masses, believing that you're part of their team. And that by lying or cheating or um, throwing out votes or programming software, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, it wasn't it wasn't a straight up race. Now, was it not straight up enough to affect the outcome? Well, of course, the other team thinks so because they've got that same team mentality. So the thing about the sports games is, if the referee is crooked and he's taking money to help one team win. It doesn't guarantee victory because the other team that's not in the fix, the team that you know was the favorite, because you always get more money betting on the underdog. So the team that's not the favorite, or is the favorite, I'm sorry, but that that the referees the fix isn't in on, they have to win by such a margin that even the referee helping them doesn't affect the outcome of the game, right? So it's it's twice as hard. You don't, you don't only have to win. You have, to, you have to beat the other team and the referees. So I think it's going to stand. I, I think um, the Democrats won by cheating, and I'm not 
putting down people who voted for Biden or support him. You you believe what you want to believe, but if you're being honest, you, you, there's enough fraud examples, videos of people coming out and saying, "I I saw it." You know, there, where there's smoke, there's fire. There was there was fraud. Now, what once again was it enough? Was that the difference in him winning? I don't, I don't know. You don't know if you're being honest. We don't know. So I, I think it's going to stand. I think, uh, I think they cheated. Whether they cheated enough to make the difference in the margins, I don't know. But I don't think that the Republicans or Trump, because the Republicans are kind of abandoning Trump at this point. The minute he was losing, they never liked him in the first place because he really was an outsider. So all of Washington hated him. And um, so the, the Republicans are running for cover, too. As long as they won, that's all they care about. They're little races, right, because it's all about what's in it for them, right? And same thing with the people. They don't, Republicans don't care about the people. Democrats don't care about the people. None of them do. It's all about their own power and money. So I don't think they're gonna, Trump's going to be able to overcome it. Um, even if he won, I don't think it matters because... You know, the Democrats have been working on this for four years. You know, and, and when I say the Democrats, once again, not the people, not not people I know who are liberal or Democrat. They didn't do any of this shit. It was like, you know, the, the party, the DNC and the backers, you know, the wealthy backers, people who wanted Trump out. Um, they made sure he got out, whether he won or not. They weren't going to stand for four more years, so... And I honestly don't think he's going to overturn it because all the, the MAGA army, you know, the big Trump army with their red hats, they're, they're going to post on Facebook and bitch about it. That's it. Okay, you say you, you vented, you feel good, but you didn't change a damn thing. The, the vote still goes for Biden. It is what it is. You can't change it. You don't have the power. I can't change it. There's nothing I can do. Um, so good on them. They won. Uh, as to what's going to happen to America over the next four years, we'll see. Um, my opinion is higher taxes because somebody's got to pay for all these great programs. You want free health care? Yeah, we want free health care. Who's paying for it? You. <laughs> you. Not me. <laughs> I, I switched countries. I saw it coming. Once again, I'm not that much of a fucking genius. I didn't think it was coming now, but I saw it coming long term. You want free health care? You want to give uh, welfare and food stamps to immigrants, you know, thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants who can't be bothered to come into the country the way my grandparents did from Ireland, you know, going through Ellis Island and registering legit, you know, by law, legal way. No, no, we don't have time for that. Just let the hordes come in over the wall. Cool. Great. Good for you. You're a good person. You feel good about yourself? Yeah, let them in. Give them benefits. Who's paying for that? You. <laughs> you, you're going to pay for it. You're going to work your balls off for 40 to 60 hours a week to give your money for all this free stuff. I could see it coming <laughs> like nothing else. And and what's a little frustrating to me is, is some of you guys who I know who are liberals are smart. You're not stupid people. Um, how can you not see this coming? How can you not ask... The one. Oh, thank you. Time in. Nibbles. Uh, how can you not ask the one simple question? Who, who's going to pay for all this? <laughs> is, that, is that a fair question? Who's going to pay for it? Not me. Mm-mm. No. No. No, I'm keeping my hand on my wallet. I work too hard for that freaking money to give it away. You know, so kids can have free college, you know, forgive student debt, you know. Nobody ever has an answer. No politician ever has an answer for who's going to pay for it. And it's because they don't want to say, well, it's you guys, you suckers, who are middle class, who are stupid enough to keep working. We're going to tax you to death. No, no. I'm not going to work for the government till May, which I saw, you know, when I was in my 20s and 30s. An article in the Times or the Wall Street Journal that you work for the government till May because of the tax structure. At the time, I was in New Jersey. And as I mentioned, uh, I was paying 28% federal tax, but it was my bill, my tax bill was 40% because of state taxes and gas tax and education tax and property tax and all that. It was over, it was over 40%. So basically, the government's taking half your money to pay for these programs that, you know, don't you want to be a good person? 
Don't you want to give those less fortunate than, than you money? Sure. Where's the money come from? Well, it comes from you. <laughs> and, and what's funny is the mayor of Seattle, I'll, I'll end here, the mayor of Seattle called the taking over of nine blocks in Seattle uh, the summer of love. Uh, keep in mind, there was a rapper who was the warlord. The summer of love. They called the warlord. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just summer of love, summer of love, summer of love. AK 47s, <laughs> automatic weapons, the warlord. <laughs> but I digress. The mayor was all behind it. She refused. She told the police to stand down, the evil, nasty police. Stand down. You're evil. You're scum. You're, you're worth Give up your precinct for the summer of love. Now, did she ask the people who had businesses or lived in those nine blocks? No. Fuck no. They have no rights. This is the summer of love. Just be captive and be held inside a barricade. Be extorted for money. Be raped. <laughs> there was murders. But it's the summer of love. Right? That's Mayor Jenny. That's that's a liberal. She's a liberal, and she wants peace and freedom, and she wants to wear tie-dye shirts and peace signs and, and be a hippie, because it's a great idea. It's an amazing idea. Let's just love each other. The reality, as we all know, is way different, but hey, it's a great idea. Then, when she wasn't giving them enough, give it, give us, give us support, give us toilets, uh, porta-potties, have them cleaned by the city at their, at their expense. You know, give us clothes, give us food, give us, give us, give us. And when she didn't give enough, if they want, once you're given something, you want more. It's human nature. Then they marched on her house. And the next day, the cops came in. You know, something that Trump couldn't do because he would be Hitler, he would be military, he would be authoritarian, he'd be Nazi, all the names that the liberals would call Trump if he did what Mayor Jenny, the summer of love lady, did after they marched on her house. So when you guys have to pay for all this shit, I think you're going to be singing a different tune. And like I said, I have four, you know, acquaintances, friends uh, who are liberal. Two of them are already, already, you know, in, within the last year or two had plans to move out of the country, not because of politics, but because uh, they have enough money. They're wealthy and they have enough money to go retire somewhere other than the U.S. So. They voted for Biden. I'm sure all four voted for Biden. And only two of them are going to have to live with the consequences of that. So it's going to be an interesting four years. Um, Biden, like Trump, I think is uh, defeatable. I, I, I thought the only person who um, couldn't beat Trump in 16 was Hillary. So why the DNC picked her other than she is in on it and they all know each other, I don't know. Because any any other candidate, I think Bernie could have beat Trump in 16, I really do, even though he's pretty radical. Uh, I think the only person who could have lost to Biden was Trump because he's so hated. And then, you know, people blame him for the pandemic, which is fucking ridiculous, but whatever. Whatever your views, you got your views, that's cool. But... Trump was about the only candidate that would lose. So 2024, I think Biden's out. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the next four years. When somebody's got to pay for all these great programs, we'll see how liberal you are when you got to give half your paycheck away. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm not giving shit. I'm not giving a fucking dime. I earned it. You go earn it. Free, free. Nobody ever give me shit, shit for free. I don't want shit for free. I want to earn it. I know that makes me radical. I know it makes me racist. I know it makes me deplorable. I know it makes me all those labels. Cool. You do you, I'll do me. I'm not giving the government a fucking dime. Uh, they haven't earned it. I earned my money. Has the government earned? Have the illegal aliens earned? Have the college students earned my money? No. I earned my money. Yeah, I'm a selfish prick. Okay, cool. No problem. I'm good. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Uh, I'm glad I'm out. That's all I can say. I'm glad I'm out because I, I couldn't live there anymore. It's not the same country I grew up in. Some of you are happy about that, but I don't think you will be over the next four years. I dated a girl uh, who lived in Russia for five, uh, five years. I dated her. She lived in Russia 30, 40 years. And... Uh, the story she told me about waiting online an hour for a liter of milk. 
right. <laughs> Communism, baby. Great idea. But you talk to somebody who's lived it, it doesn't work. But no. You guys are smarter than me. What, what the fuck do I know? <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy the next four years.